Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you see the right slide? Yep. Excellent. Well, now's the time where the rubber meets the road, and it's really nice to follow up on Loyola's work because let me tell you folks, you're going to see some drastically different results from our contouring challenge, which, which in itself will tell a story. But um, let's go through these things. I wanted to start off with a little bit of background about the genesis of the contouring challenge. Really, this was all about uh, quality. As, as you saw, one of the people who's uh, sponsoring this is ROR, Radiation Oncology Resources, and they do something called the Plan Challenge. It's become very popular. Uh, a way to assess planning skills and contouring skills. Really what planning is, though, it's those two independent things, contouring followed by what I would call the dose shaping. And we thought in order to control the variables a little better, we wanted to study the, uh, the effects of the different contouring separately from the effects of the planning. In fact, we did a study based on the first plan challenge, which was a head and neck case, where ROR was uh, uh, really nice enough to give me, share all their data, and actually, we have a manuscript submitted to the Red Journal where we studied the dosimetric impact just of the differences in the contouring. So what we did was we would take the doses optimized by each participant on their contours, and then we would take their doses and overlay the gold contours so that we could assess the effect of only a contour difference. And we saw huge dosimetric differences, many of them in excess of 50% in the mean and the, in metrics of the mean and the max dose. So we thought, wow, this is, we're on to something here. Um, so we decided to do a, this contouring challenge. So, uh, so, so like I said, we didn't have anyone do plans on this, only the contouring. And I can't mention the plan challenge without uh, 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 recognizing our friend Vicki Lacerba. She did the first ever plan challenge for ROR. Um, we lost her last year, but she's with us in all of these endeavors. She was, she was a great person. I hope a lot of you had a chance to meet her. So why a contouring challenge? Just briefly, the purpose was to raise awareness and share knowledge on the science of anatomy delineation. I mean, just to listen to Dr. Sobchak, that was amazing to hear all the, the, the underpinnings of what goes into good contouring. And then really what we're searching for is this is a beginning um, to help find ways to advance the quality of radiation therapy in cost-effective ways. Uh, and, and I think contouring and quality systems there is a great way to invest in your staff versus just investing in new equipment. Um, the accuracy and consistency of contouring is so important because everything downstream depends on that accuracy. Treatment planning, plan review, the actual uh, delivery, IGRT, adaptive radiation therapy, and all the way to clinical trials and outcomes analysis is all based on these contours. So I like to use this little cartoon I put together where we talk about putting the cart before the horse and really, contouring is the road that, becomes the, that comes before the horse, that comes before all the carts. So if we don't get contouring correct, then no matter what type of planning system or delivery technology we have, um, everything could be, it's like having a, a road with potholes in it. So the outline of what I'm going to go through here very quickly is I'll go over the experimental design. For those of you who didn't take part in the challenge, this will let you see what everyone had to do on Monday. Uh, the materials and methods. Then the results and the announcement of the top three winners. The experimental design was quite simple. We gave a common CT image set was provided to all the contestants, and we asked for a fixed set of ROIs or regions of interest to be contoured as per the instructions. We wanted to control it and make it realistic, so we did, we did impose a time limit of about an hour. We gave a little bit of flex time on that because there was some you know, technical difficulties getting data back and forth. But really, we were shooting for about an hour to contour the five ROIs that, that I'll mention here in a minute. And then the only thing we really needed back was the DICOM RT structure set, which we would use to then compare with the gold structure set that was provided by Dr. Sobchak from Fox Chase. So it was a prostate study, 72 CT slices at a three millimeter slice spacing. The ROIs we requested were the prostate, seminal vesicles, bladder, rectum, and the penile bulb. Uh, we didn't bother with the femurs. And then, like I said, we were a little lax on the, on the time uh, limit, but most people did finish within an hour. So how this worked was we had, uh, weeks before, had this CT set contoured um, to create the gold ROI, so they were ready and waiting in analysis. At a specific time on Monday morning, we then provided those CTs for download to the contestants. So they downloaded them to their contouring software, defined their regions of interest, and submitted back their results. Um, and then the, 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 
results you're about to see were generated by the structure analysis software, and then that leads us to where we are today, which is the web presentation of the results. Um, a little more specifics, we did get 59 registered contestants. Uh, we had to cut it off basically after a couple days because we really originally only planned to do 10, um, but we, we figured the analysis is so easy, let's just go for it. And then when game day came about, we had 27 successful uploaded data sets. Um, we give an open invite to the AutoSeg vendors, and we were able to contact a few of them, but hopefully this is something we can improve on in future contouring challenges. We didn't get any submissions from them. Um, we did get agreements from two of the companies that they would compete, but we didn't get their results. So we hope there will be better participation from the AutoSeg vendors um, as we continue and do more contouring challenges. All right, the penalty, you heard Jen and John from Loyola uh, talk about their penalty. I was much more forgiving on the penalty. Um, here, what I gave was a one millimeter forgiveness region and then a linear penalty uh, growing upward in penalty out to five millimeters. After five millimeters, everything was penalized the same. The slope here was a half. So if you were uh, one millimeter away, you didn't get any penalty. If you were two millimeters away, you were at a half and et cetera, you can see. And the way we judge it is in three dimensions. So the structure software takes the distance away of every voxel in space from where it should be, both extra and missing voxels, finds the distance in three dimensions, and then uh, applies the penalty. A quick example of this, this is an actual slice from the contouring challenge from Monday. I'll zoom up on it and I'll show you three voxels. So this one right here would be one millimeter away. We would give it no penalty. It's like it was perfectly drawn. If you're two millimeters away, we gave a penalty of a half a voxel, and if you're uh, three millimeters away, that's when it's a one millimeter penalty, and it, and it increases linearly out to five, at which point we cap it off. So keep that in mind. Um, some first metrics, just go, let's just look at the volumes. So a simple metric would be total volume, just to get an idea of how consistent they were. In the first column, you'll see the, uh, the volume of the gold set, and then the average of all contestants with the standard deviation, and then the range from low to high. Quickly going through the bladder, you can see these things were not variable at all, as nor would they be expected to be, given that they're pretty easy to see on the CT scans. The next most uniform was the seminal vesicles. Now one thing you'll notice is that the gold seminal vesicles had a volume of 6.6 .6 cubic centimeters. The average of all the contestants was 8.3, so it's about 26% larger, um, and a little bit more variation. You see a standard deviation there of, uh, of about 20% uh, of, the, of the average. Prostate, we saw another trend. Um, again, about a 30% larger, and I'll show you an example. And this, this goes back to, I think, what Dr. Sobchak was saying, is that a lot of people are contouring the muscle of the prostate. Uh, then getting towards the very variable, we have the rectum. One thing I want to point out here, and Dr. Sobchak also highlighted this, most of the contestants did contour a lot more superior on the rectum than was in the gold data set, and I'll show you an example of that. And then I tell you, the penile bubble was all over the place, folks. Um, it was a real hit and miss thing. Now to look at the metric score. So remember, this was a more lenient, much more lenient metric than, than Loyola used. Um, and look at the average score. So the bladder, they were almost all perfect. Average of 98. The max score is 100. Seminal vesicles, now we went down to a 71.91 out of 100. The average for the prostate, 59.77. The rectum, we're down to 33, so it's getting pretty variable. And then you can see the penile bulb was really, you see a lot of negative uh, numbers. In fact, the range there from minus 887. But then comforting to see that the high score was 88.19, which is an extremely high score. So there were some that were really matching the gold very well. A look at the distributions. Um, in fact, let me give you an example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share the application real quick. And what I have here is the structure software with, with an example data set loaded. Okay, so you should see it now. What, what we have loaded here is the gold data set and, one, and, a, and an example of a contestant. As you mentioned, Dr. Sobchak saying the window and level is very important. So if he were here to tell me how he window and levels it, that would be nice. But for now, you can see the dotted line is a conti uh, the contestant ROI, and the solid line would be the gold ROI. To generate results, you just need to hit the calculate button. And then all those volumetric calculations are done, and then they produce the results. So this one had a bladder score of 98, 
but then the penile bulb was was a very low score because they just didn't uh, they hardly overlapped at all. Now what I want to show you here is the difference view. One thing I want to highlight if I go to uh, some slices here on the prostate, a very um, common trend was something like this. So this middle contour is the prostate. We did see a lot of the contestants where it was just larger. On all the axials, it was just larger in general uh, in diameter on each slice. And then for the rectum, you can see here on this slice, it's a very good match. But as I move superior, and to use Dr. Sobchak's words, where we start breaking down is where it gets squiggly. So it's all red. In other words, this was contoured. Um, and this, is prob this was very common, very common. So this is an interesting thing to note. Uh, and this, this is what caused a lot of the rectum scores to be low, because a lot of these extra voxels were just because they weren't contoured on the gold set. Um, so whether that hurts the treatment plan or not, uh, it, it probably doesn't, but it certainly will affect what your mean dose to the rectum or some of maybe even your max dose. Um, but I think what we're looking for in any manufacturing system, and contouring and treatment planning is just manufacturing, you want to look for consistency. You want to, uh, to achieve a tolerance so that uh, if a physician goes from one clinic to another, he or she knows they're reviewing DVHs that, that mean the same thing. So this is, should be a real goal of our industry is to start to uh, shorten, uh, to decrease this variability in contouring so that we can have a higher confidence in uh, what we're comparing. And then if we want to look at the gold set uh, the, of the penile bulb, what I can do is turn all the difference views off and just turn the penile bulb on. So here's an example of a slice where there was overlap, but you can see there's quite a difference in shape. It's the dotted line and the solid line. Can you see that okay? Yep. Okay. And then you can see where they're different. And then if I move a little inferior, so they matched here, you can see that the general shape is, is, is different. And then we did have uh, commonly the error was the penile bulb was contoured more superior amongst all the contestants than the gold data set. Now let me get back um, to, to the presentation. How do I do that? <coughs> All right, so now when you're looking at that, we're going to look at a distribution of uh, metric scores. So remember, max score is 100. Bladder, everyone just nailed it. Kind of hard to miss. So everyone was contouring the urine perfectly. <laughs> um, the next most consistent were the seminal vesicles. And you can see here all the metric scores were grouped around uh, a, you know, a nice distribution, some being very high. There was a li little outlier down at, at the left. I'd have to take a look and see why that happened. Get more variable when we get to the prostate. Even more variable yet when we get to the rectum, where we saw a large number that were actually negative or zero metric scores, large part to do with just too much contouring. And um, if you, like you said, if the penalties will grow uh, as you get too far away. But you can see here, very few matched the gold uh, rectum well. And then the penile bulb, most of the scores were negative, meaning that they didn't overlap at all. And the dice coefficient in this case was zero, or our metrics were negative. And that's an interesting thing. Um, when you're looking at the max dose to the penile bulb, you really want that to be in the right spot because we know with the gradients in IMRT, proton therapy, rotational therapy, the gradients are exquisite. So having, a, having the contouring you can see here may have a bigger impact than even uh, treatment planning skills, and maybe even uh, uh, just as much as an accurate patient setup. And then if we look at the contestants, uh, average scores, so this is how we found our three winners. We averaged all the metric scores, taking out the negative values and, and just setting them to zero. I'll cover that in a moment. So we saw a nice distribution, and we did have three that did separate themselves from the crowd a little bit. So determining the top three, let me tell you real quick, took the average of all the metric scores, so of those five. Anything negative, so if the penile bulb was really far negative, I didn't want that to skew the average, so I set that to zero. It was nice, though, that none of the top three winners had any negative scores, so they didn't get any unfair advantage because of that uh, truncation at zero. And then finally, I wanted to show you the winning scores. Um, third place had an average, ex just an exceptional average of 70.35. Second place, 75.85, and really stretching out into the lead here, the winning score was 83.73. And if we have time at the end, and 